Hi and welcome to my playhouse. I just completed a video on the HP E DL380 Generation 10 and I have something similar on the table but it should be completely different. This is the HP E DL560 Generation 10. This is um, this is an expensive server. So the server is like $43,000 configured as it is here on the table. This costs 266,000 Danish kroners, so it's quite expensive. I just transported eight of them plus the DL380 in my car down here to this data center. If you want to see that, well, you will probably have to go check out Patreon because that's where I did that. But just showed you the palette of stuff but well that's how it goes let's have a look at this so this is the HPE Polyant DL560 generation 10 as said there is nothing much on the front this is as dull as it gets you can release the server here you could put in 24 drives here but there are none because this server is going to be used for VMware it's going to be connected to a SAN, so it's just going to be booting on a USB stick or something and it really doesn't need any drives out here. There is the normal thing, we have the power on button here, a tiny little button. We have the UID button that lights up blue on the back. I hope it's blue, I think it's blue, it's usually blue. And then we have the heartbeat or uh, the health LED, I believe it's called, I forget. We have a network LED, we have a USB 3 connector right there. We have the SID, which is this little control panel. We saw it on the DL380. This one is a little bit different because the components in here are a little bit different. We might have to go a little bit down. As a closer look, we can see that there's four network connections. We have four CPUs, four, oh, four processors. Then we have four power supplies. We have processor dim groups um, apparently and each dim group has 12 blocks of memory that's good I've I haven't had this open yet I'm I'm very curious as well and we have six fans I'm guessing that this might be the same fan assembly as we saw in the DL 380 just guessing and we have over temperature power cap and PCI riser so awesome then we have we have this little information thing that tells us the password and the serial number of the server. Uh, same thing we have here on the top of the server, also serial number and password for the ILO adapter. We have information over here, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, made in the Czech Republic. And a lot of stuff in Chinese, so let's go around the back. Here we are around the back and this looks fairly similar to the DL300. And 80 generation 10. We have six PCI Express slots here. Probably there's room. Probably there's room for something else over here. Let's see that when we get to it. We have four one gigabit ports there. We have some USB ports. We have the UID there. Uh, we have two USB 2 connectors. It looks like VGA connection. The ILO connector there. And we have a serial connector. We did not have that on the 380. And then we have two very beefy power supplies. Um, and room for two more. So this is, this is 1600 watts of power supply. So they're twice as powerful as the ones that we saw in the 380. Um, same form factor though, say that they are 94% efficient and they are also 80 plus platinum. So that's awesome. This server is at least 2 kilograms heavier than the DL380 and um, yeah, I can confirm that. Well, after lifting in 8 of them, my arms are pretty long. So let's open this up and see what we got. Uh, it has the opening mechanism way down here. That's definitely different from, from the other one. 
Yeah, the other one had it up here. So that is different right there. So, but we open it the same way, same mechanism. So what do we have? We have the instruction on the back of the lid here. It's pretty much the same as on the uh, EL380. We have different things on the system board here. Only different is that we have another system board here. They, uh, there are two layers of system boards. We have the, the bottom system board where processor number one and two are sitting together with their combined 24 slots of memory. Then we have a, another PCB that goes on top of that for processor number three and four. And they as well has 24 slots for memory. We have different configurations for the server over here. Uh, see, it comes with eight bays. That's the edition we have here. Then uh, we have another one where it has 16 bays and CD-ROM drive and a couple of bays here. We have the back of it. Looks like we can... Number 18. 18 is... Yeah, we can have a butterfly riser card that goes over there if, if we are not. We have the choice of putting in power supply 3 and 4 or we can put in some PCI Express ports. Yeah, that's the main difference. Everything is this. Here is the butterfly riser card and front panel description right there. I wanted to know what that LED was called. That's the number five. It's the health LED. Thank you. So this definitely looks very similar to the 380. Uh, except all of this. I'm guessing that this fan assembly thing is probably the same thing. No, no, it's not the same thing. It's it's kind of different. Hmm. Oh, this is cool. So, hmm. Okay. We have a back plane here for the hard drives. There are no drives in this server, so it's um, it's not being used. But it is there. It's pretty much standard for all servers to come with a back plane uh, ready for the first eight drives. And there are hot plug fans. They look exactly uh, the same as for the DL380. Awesome. And then we have this processor board, which I'm guessing we will release with this one and can pop up. Well, we have like a basket here. Pretty awesome. So here we have two very expensive CPUs and um, this server is only half occupied with RAM, as you can see here. All the white slots are occupied, all the black slots are not occupied. This server has 1.5 terabytes of RAM and this is very neat. They have actually put down some metal things here so you can sit it on the table without breaking any connections. Awesome! And that's the connections. Holy crap, they're big. That's some beefy connectors. Uh, yeah, otherwise this looks very similar to the DL380. Of course, everything is different, but still there are some similarities. Really, there are. So let's just have a look at one of these blocks of memory. These are, of course, 64 gigabytes memory blocks. We have here 64 gigabytes DDR4 RAM, and they are 2,666 megahertz. And they are LR RAM, I believe, load reduced. When you get up into these sizes, well, you you can't get R RAM. You have to get the LR RAM. So what else do we have? We have some beefy. This is I've never seen this before. We have the CPUs here, and the cooling goes over here as well. So it's like hmm. That's a new system. And we have power connectors and probably the signal connectors for the second floor. Let's take one of the riser cards up and see what's beneath that. This one, for example. Let's see, we have the M.2 slots in this one. Awesome. We have one on the back as well. In this one, we have. 16 gigabit HPAs for SAN connection. We have network connections. We have two 10 gigabit connectors here for that. On the system board, we have four one gigabit connectors. 
going out the back. So this is fully occupied as well. So that's kind of cool. Let's check the other one. It should be about the same configuration there. Uh, this server is a, the server is going to be a VMware host. So down here is where you install VMware, and it's just an SD card there, a micro SD card, Hewlett Packet branded, tiny eight gigabytes of storage there, and it just pops in that little slot there, and that's your operating system. So all of this machine is just compute power and RAM. Oh, there is only uh, there is only a network card in here, and again, like on the DL three hundred and eighty, there is no M.2 slots on the second riser card. I have to go investigate if that's normal or if you can actually get that. That would be awesome to have four extra M.2 slots in the server. But the PCI riser card here has two uh, PCI Express X8 and one PCI Express X16. So you can put a GPU in here and there is the power for it. So that's awesome. Otherwise we have the BIOS battery, we have the USB connections. If you want to boot from USB, they are down there. Uh, nothing else underneath here of interest. We have the ILO chip it seems there. We have another riser card on the back of this one. That's for the butterfly one that points that way. So we could put a GPU that way in. So you put that back in, mount that. So what else do we have down here? We have the flexible LUM card here. This particular one is just four times one. We could just try and remove that. It has a finger screw, so you can pop that out. I hope we do. Okay, there. It's, it's just a little PCI card like that. Uh, this FLR is a flexible LUM and R is for, I have no idea what the R is for. Redundancy, retarded, very nice. So, cool, we'll put that back in. We didn't actually ask for this one, so weird that they delivered it with, with one of those. That is mounted. On this server, there's two SAS connectors to go up to the front backplane on the system board itself. Uh, there is room for an, there's room for an internal rate controller right here. Not a lot of room, but there is room. I'm sure they have thought about that. It doesn't look like there's a lot of room there, but down here we have two USB 3 connectors if you want to boot from a regular USB stick. Also, we have two. SATA connectors, one there and one there. I'm not sure one of them has power and the other one is just signal, is my best guess. There, let's put this one back in. So this server has four CPUs, each of them with 16 cores, three gigahertz. So that comes to a total of 64 cores, which run three gigahertz with hyper-threading, so that's 128 cores in this system. The carrying bag here, let's have a look at that. It's the same as the system board, actually. It looks like they more or less they just cut a piece of the system board out, which is, of course, not the case, but, well, it kind of looks like it. Um, it has a nice handle, and then on the bottom, in the middle of it, it has these beefy connectors here and I'm guessing that it would be a really bad idea to break any of those pins because that's probably an expensive part. It has a couple of big power plugs here for the voltage for the RAM and, and the CPUs and it also has some power converters on the board down here underneath the CPU. There are some blocks here and that's for transferring the power to the required voltages that is needed. So uh, let's try and put this back in, see if that goes well.
hope that's okay. Looks kind of okay. Over here are the connectors for the extra four power supplies that you can put in the server. Also down here is the intrusion detector connector that you can put in and it will feel if the server LED has been off. I'm guessing that we can buy something to put on top here and utilize for more power supplies. I don't think it's needed. This server is built for redundancy. It already has two power supplies. It already has two network cards. It already has two HPA cards. It has multiple processors, multiple RAM slots, multiple fans, multiple everything. Uh, so the whole system is redundant. But we also build our system redundant so that if one server fails, well, there's a whole bunch of other servers that will take over that. That's why I brought eight of them down here. We are replacing our old setup with eight of these at this location. So we are replacing a number of HP DL580s generation 8 with this newer HP DL560 generation 10. Our space in our data center is really critical. So we have gone for this smaller form factor compared to a larger server with more room in it. We could probably have looked into the DL580 as well and gotten a server that was larger. But we find that we could do the same in this server so we can replace each of our DL580s with two of these and getting more than double the power. And where our DL580s has two terabytes of RAM, each of these will have 1.5 terabytes of RAM. And as you saw, it's only half occupied. So if we at a later time need more RAM, well, this is upgradable. And at present, these 64 gigabyte blocks are rather expensive. But in two years, well, they are probably not that expensive anymore. Then it's probably the 128 gigabyte and the 256 gigabyte blocks that are the expensive ones. And these 64 gigabyte blocks will be cheaper. <laughs> probably not free, but ch definitely cheaper. Investing in new servers is always what do we need, what do we have, what can we live with for this location, it has to be pretty safe. Because if you needed it to be really, really safe, you would go get a Lenovo server. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.